Hey YouTube, what's up? It's your boy Sean Austin here again from Sean's Rabbit Tree and Aquaponic Produce. We're back with another rabbit farming video. Today, we're going to be talking a bit about our new litters that we kindled this week through our artificial insemination program. Now, I've been getting a lot of questions from persons about artificial insemination, I mean whether it works, how it works. So we're going to talk a bit about that today. I'll show you a few of the litters. I'll give you some of the stats and you can be the judge for yourself. So stay tuned and we'll be back with more right after the intro. Okay guys, so we're back today, we're talking a little more about artificial insemination, whether it works or not. You'll be the judge at the end of the day, I'm going to give you some stats in a little while, I'm going to show you some of the letters, but first let me just touch a bit on the question of whether it works. Of course it works. Now artificial insemination is used widely throughout the world, especially or predominantly in commercial rabbit trees it's not used so much in cases where persons are into the show rabbit business or let's say the hobbyists but on a commercial scale in fact it's proven that artificial insemination is actually the most efficient way to do breeding but we'll get to that now as to the question of how it works let's talk a little bit about breeding rabbits now in cases where you're doing natural breeding when you take the doe to the box cage right you're gonna leave them there for a while the male is going to start uh, chasing around the doe eventually he's gonna mount her he's gonna start humping on her back and if they do uh, manage to copulate you'll see him fall off and that's where the term comes from a lot you'll hear a lot of people say they had two fall offs and three fall offs that comes from that act of the buck actually falling off on the side after he and the dog copulate when that happens the male or the buck is going to ejaculate a quantity of semen into the vaginal cavity and from there that that semen hopefully has millions of live healthy sperm those sperm are going to start swimming up the reproductive system all the way up to the uterus where they're going to meet up with the eggs and that's where you're going to have conception now that entire act of breeding with the buck mounting the dough and pulling on a fur and all of that stuff that is a type of physical stimulation that induces the dough to release her eggs because the key thing to remember with rabbits is that they are induced ovulators so during natural sex that physical stimulation of mating causes the dough to release eggs and those eggs move down to the uterus where they are fertilized by the sperm and you have conception. Now let's look at artificial insemination. In the case of artificial insemination what we are actually doing is depositing a quantity of semen with live healthy sperm directly into the uterus of the dough via an artificial means of course in this case we use what's called an artificial insemination gun that gun is inserted through the vagina of the dough all the way down into the uterus where the semen is deposited so in this case it's like this we're telling these guys here what well, this is not no navy seal training there's no need to swim the five miles to the shore we are going to deposit you guys directly on the beach you just have to do your thing when you get there but herein lies the problem with artificial insemination because there's no natural physical stimulation to the door with the buck chasing her and mounting her and pulling her through and things like that because of that lack of natural physical stimulation the door won't ovulate so you will have a situation where you have lots of sperm they are waiting on the beach but no eggs for them to fertilize and this is where now we have to induce ovulation by a chemical means so what we do is that we introduce a hormone 
called GnRH to the dough and that causes her to release her eggs. Now GnRH, it's a long word, it's, it stands for gonadotropin releasing hormone. Now you don't need to remember that but I mean I'll put the name under here just in case you want to look it up and do a little more research on it. But that is the hormone that is given to the dough that causes her to release her eggs. Now, with the introduction of this hormone, eggs will be released and they're going to move down to the uterus where they'll meet all these healthy sperm that are already there waiting. They're going to fertilize and you're going to have conception. In both cases, you're going to palpate your dose 14 days after breeding, whether it's natural or artificial insemination, it remains the same. 14 days after breeding, you're going to palpate to confirm pregnancy. Those, those that aren't pregnant, you're going to rebreed them and those that are confirmed pregnant, well, you're going to start preparing them for kindle at day 30 to 32 from breed. Okay, so today we're going to look at a batch of uh, litters that we had within the last week. All of these those were bred within four days of each other so all of them would have kindled within four days of each other so these litters are averaging between four and seven days old now you'll have to forgive me because I took some notes here of some stats and it's a lot to remember so if you see me glancing at my notes from time to time please understand why i'm doing that because it's for your benefit i don't want to make any mistakes but i want you to get an idea of how this batch went now let me start off first by saying that uh, this by no means was the best batch we've ever had now since we've started doing artificial insemination uh, our lowest conception rate was 58 percent this was in the earlies when we had just started we were now getting the feel for the procedure you know we didn't have a, a microscope we were just doing things on a whim we were trusting that the box were 100 percent you know we weren't testing for uh the presence of sperm or even motility or anything like that we were just going on the fact that hey these were proven box and we still had a measure of success having said that uh the best conception rate we've ever had was 95 percent and that is uh, i think was from a batch of about 30 something those that we bred so it varies but generally we average around 80 85 percent conception but this case here was a little lower and i still decided to show you guys it because i want to be real with you and let you know but <clears throat> even though it wasn't the best conception rate that we've ever had i still back our choice to use artificial insemination over natural breeding let's have a look at some of the numbers before we actually get to the litters right? a total of 45 does were bred we had 34 does that were confirmed pregnant so that's 34 positive and 11 negative now these 45 does were bred using six bucks now uh, not all of the box were from our farm three of the box were from our farm and three box that are located elsewhere we went to that farm we extracted the semen brought it to our farm where we did the inseminations that's a conception rate of 75.5 percent i don't think that's too bad now surely if you're a person doing natural breeding and you're keeping good records remember we keep talking about the importance of record keeping you need to be keeping records of everything you do in your rabbit that's the only way you're going to identify the problems and the shortcomings of your system so you can correct them so if you're doing natural breeding and you've been keeping good records i am almost certain that most of you can say to me that you get more than 75.5 percent conception or you get a higher rate of conception and 75.5 percent and that's okay i'm happy however there are a lot of other factors that you have to take into consideration firstly when we bred those 45 does collectively it would have taken us about one hour 60 minutes to breed those 45 does now with your natural breeding and your better conception rate 
I am almost certain it would have taken you a lot longer to get those 45 doughs bread. Let's think about it. If you have 45 doughs to breed, even if you have 15 bucks and you're breeding one dough to one buck each day, it's still going to take you three days to breed 45 doughs. And that's in a perfect world. Anybody who has bred rabbits before knows that there's no way it's going to work out the way you plan. Some doughs have their own idea about when they want to be bred and sometimes it could take you days into weeks to breed certain individual does. So you're going to just have to keep trying them and trying them different times of day, different methods, all of that, trying to get them to accept the buck so that you can have a breeding done. That's why I say, in this case, I am willing to trade my lower conception rate for your hours that it would have taken you to breed 45 does. Because when I breed 45 does in one hour, that's it. We're on to something else. So you have time now to do other things in your rabbit tree. It may not be that way if you have a small rabbit tree. If you just have, let's say, five, six, even ten does, it may not be that bad to do natural breeding because you may have three or four bucks and I mean it's just 10 does but as long as you get up to a hundred does or more it's gonna take you a really long time to get all those does bred with natural breeding so AI obviously at that stage becomes the better option so let's look at some of the numbers now so from the 34 does that kindled we had 216 kits now that's an average of 6.3 kits per liter and that's not too bad we actually have our benchmark as a minimum of six to remain or to be considered a performing dough in our rabbit tree we aim for six and above right now it's not a perfect math because there were some really large litters and there were a few really small litters as well but when you balance it out it worked out to 6.3 average per liter. Now let me give you a breakdown of the numbers so you have a better idea of how things really went. We had four does that only kindled two. We had two does that kindled three, two does that kindled five, four does that kindled six, ten does that kindled seven, eight does that kindled five, four does that kindled nine, and two does that kindled 11 each so you see we have some big numbers there and it's been thrown off a bit by let's say the six small litters that we had now in fairness the four does that only made two two of them were first timers and two of them were older does so the two first timers will definitely have another go at it the two older does unfortunately this would be their last run around the track because i've been observing them for a while and their last kindle they average about five four point something i think and now they're down to two so they're definitely out they won't be rebred they'll be going off to freezer camp the two does that made three both of them were first time does so both of them will be rebred and they'll be given another chance to see if they could come up to that minimum of six per liter right we also had two does that made five those two does uh they are normally good performers so this is actually the first time that they made less than six so obviously i'll be monitoring them for their next litter to see whether it goes back up or if it continues to go down and if it continues to go down then it's two more girls off the freezer camp so you see so the numbers weren't too bad even though we had just 75.5 percent conception rate but but from these results you can definitely see that it is possible to have equally large litters that you get as when you're doing natural breeding now I know some people who do natural breeding would tend to leave the dough with the buck for three and four and sometimes five fall off because there's the school of thought that uh, increased number of fall offs potentially increases litter size, <laughs> right? Good luck with that uh, because 
when you're doing AI, you see through a lot of the myths. Because when you take a sample, a semen sample from a buck and you look at it under the microscope, depending on the quantity of sperm and the motility and all of that, you are then able to extend that one extraction to inseminate 10 does and still attain good litter size. So it makes absolutely no sense to me why I would want to have a doe and a buck together for an extended period of time trying to get four and five fall-offs. To me, you're just overworking your buck, overusing him when you could have probably gotten two or three does bred at once as opposed to having one doe take three or four fall-offs. That's just my two cents on that. But let's go look at some of the litters and you guys could definitely let me know what you think. This is cage one in batch three. This is one of the does that would have made 11. Uh, she has eight with her, eight really nice fat ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, what I did is I fostered off three to another doe and I left her with eight. So, so far, all of her 11 are still alive. So let me just put that in here because I forgot to mention that. Now, even though we had 34 liters kindled, we don't currently have 34 liters in boxes. That's because we would have fostered off the smaller liters and rebred those doors immediately. So all the does that made, uh, let me see, two, I know definitely, right, those that made two and three per litter, those litters will foster off and those does will rebred the next day. This is the youngest litter we have here. I think they're a few days old. Uh, I think she has nine. As you see there, she pulled absolutely no fur and she ate most of the nesting material and threw the rest out of the box she made a grand mess in all in total but she is nursing them so so far all of them are alive uh let's move across right here to this girl let's see what she has in here uh well you can see she has a whole bunch of fur in here uh so let's see we have one two three four five we have six nice big fat ones come on move your head now that one there especially how wrong this belly is that little one you can actually see the milk in his belly there oh, come on don't hit the gimbal man okay i had to get me uh a little bucket to stand on here to see these litters on top uh let's see this girl here she has, let's see, I think it's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it's one of the girls that made five, but they're all looking really nice and healthy, well fed. All right, let's look at her next door neighbor right here. She has, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's six, that's alive. I think she made eight and two died so she has six coming along there all right uh she, let's open this door what we have here uh it looks like one two three four five six seven eight right, this girl here she only has four live from her litter but they are really big they're really fat and furry some really nice New Zealand's there we have seven here all right this girl is nursing right now so I won't disturb her okay guys so you get the general idea you so feel free to leave us a comment let me know how things are going with you uh, give us some idea of your, your average conception rates whether it's artificial insemination or natural breeding let us know how things are going with you if you've analyzed that data let us know what's 
the results because I mean a lot of times from your results you'll be able to identify whether the problem is with the buck with the dough or both and you can then make a decision of which of them or all of them that needs to be removed from the herd that's a really important part of rabbit production a lot of people try to deny it or they try to avoid it because they want to hold on to rabbits i mean if they're pets fine you can keep them as long as you want and put up with lack of productivity as much as you want but if you're into production for meat then you definitely have to look at optimizing your production and that means eliminating animals that are not performing so guys i'll leave you off there today sean is sitting here from sean's rabbit tree before i go i mean let me just give you all a glimpse of some of the californians that we have in our grout cages here uh, some of those will be kept to be sold as breeding stock some will be kept to be added back to our stock and the rest will be going off the freezer camp so until next time we look forward to seeing you guys next monday when we bring you a brand new rabbit farming video and don't forget look out for a brand new aquaponics video coming soon to our youtube channel near you thanks again see you soon peace